This is Overtime with Chris Dewar, only on KHQA. Well, this is Saturday, February 19th, and you have entered overtime. And in the blessed name of Matt Lorch, please bear with us tonight. We're having some technical problems, so if you're out there on the YouTube, you might want to roll now. I may stroke out in the middle of the show tonight, but bear with us. We hope it will be good. And from Champaign, Illinois, to Columbia, Missouri, and many points betwixt today, the hardworking KHQA sports team has you covered like no other. We've got playoff basketball with the Iowa, with the Kiaka Chiefs in Iowa trying to knock out a superpower tonight. We've got Illinois College looking to clinch its first Midwest Conference tournament appearance in eight years. And most importantly, we've got state championship vision quest taking place on the mats in Champaign, most notably that of McCombs' Austin Miller. Now, he burst on the scene as a freshman with a fourth place state finish at 112 pounds. A year later, Austin finished second at 125. Last year, at 130 pounds in the title match, Miller ended up on the business end of a 2-0 decision. Would this finally be his year for glory? We take you to the semifinals today, where Austin Miller had his game face on. All business and all about it today, taking on Cad Smith of Rock Ridge. Miller wasted little time getting this initial takedown at his two points, but spent most of the rest of the first round trying to get back points to no avail. He got stalled out, so eventually, this is why we love the kid. He just got ticked off and flipped Cad Smith over in the middle of period two and pinned him just that quick to advance on. So, Austin Miller moving on. Let's show you some more highlights from the early session as we continue to go through this tape. How about this? At 140 pounds, Jonah Cogs about to step up from Camp Point Central, trying to follow Austin Miller's lead right here on the same mat. Cogshell got off to a good start against Mark McDonald of Morrison, down 2-0 two, two, early. This is Jonah right here, getting out, reversing his way back. Then Jonah would get instantly reversed after that, but he would fight diligently back as well in this one after scoring the points right here. Look at Jonah just fighting to the edge of the mat to get his two. And after one period, Jonah and uh, Mark McDonald were all tied up in this match at four apiece. Unfortunately for Camp Point Central's fine, fine 140-pounder, who, by the way, has another year coming back next year, McDonald would take command of this match. You will see it right here gaining control and ending up eventually winning a 10-8 decision as he would hold off a late flourish or at least an attempt of one from Jonah right here and get the decision. Jonah fell into the back draw today, did not place in the top five, although they haven't updated that yet, so I've not seen final results of exactly where he finishes on the day. Meanwhile, at 160 pounds, his teammate Jacob Smith looks like he has Alex Young going into position for maybe a takedown at this point. Scoreless, you see right there, but great move by Young to get Smith back and get the reverse on him, or at least the takedown at that point. Same time as that was happening, Philip Norton of McComb was going at 171 pounds. I'm going back and forth. That, here he's taking down R.J. Troy right there for two points, his first two of the match. And while these two are still going on at the same time, this was my nightmare today, these two guys fighting at the same time. All of a sudden, Philip Norton will just step in and cinch the pin to advance to the state championship tonight at 171 pounds. We'll tell you about more than that in a second, but you see right there, that is the pin for Mr. Philip Norton. Meanwhile, at the same time, Jacob Smith still going. He's tied up at two apiece and ends up going into the final period as such, but it would be an escape point right here by the aforementioned Alex Young that turns the tide. And again, Jacob Smith falls into the backdrop today and into the back draw. And Jacob uh, did not place in the top five either at, at last check, so we'll update you those two. But we did have two Macomb wrestlers headed to the state championships tonight. And speaking of state championships, here are your highlights from tonight. Austin Miller, as we roll that next tape for you, going out for the parade of champions tonight. His matchup with Coy Davison, same kid he beat last year in the semifinals. This is a phenomenal match. You're looking at the last 15 seconds. Austin in a bit of a jam, but no longer reversal right there to make it a 6-4 win. And you will watch him ride this out for his first state championship. Feel great for the kid. He had like the Susan Lucci treatment the last three years. Came so close to winning a state title. And you want to talk about excited? This kid was just amped at the end of it. Watch the backflip he throws in. Look at this. This is just this is the best celebration of the night. Backflip from Austin Miller. Fantastic. That's sensational seven worthy. And then you see him later with Josh, his assistant coach. He's not only going to hug him, he's actually going to throw him to the mat and add a couple of more points to the end of this. Great night for Austin. We're going to let these highlights roll out just to show you... Uh, the, the pin of his assistant coach tonight, which was just fantastic in its own right. Great to see that from Austin Miller. Kid has worked his tail off the last four years. Here it comes. Gives Josh the big hug. And then 
Oh, look at that. The takedown as well. Fantastic stuff. Austin Miller, your state champion at 135 tonight. Unfortunately, the news not as good for Philip Norton. He would lose a 7-2 to two decision to a Jake Apple tonight. One of the guys, one of the three guys this season who's beaten him. So Philip Norton, second place. Austin Miller, first place. Great showing for Luke Ladd's crew up in Champaign. We had another state championship hopeful tonight. You're looking at Jacob Borgmar, just a sophomore from Hannibal down in Columbia today against defending state champion Justin Hyberly. And Hyberly was up 2-1 on Jacob Borgmeyer, and then he flips him into position right here for what would be the eventual pin, unfortunately, for uh, Mr. Borgmeyer, who goes down at the 49-second mark of the second period. Great showing for Jake at 215 pounds in his first year at state. However, it would be your defending state champion defending. Uh, Mr. It's three times, I believe, for uh, J Justin Hyberly. So uh, great showing. And that was the only uh, Missouri wrestler we had. So congratulations, J Jacob Borgmeyer, on a fine season. Meanwhile, a couple of eighth place finishes in Iowa. Dakota Gray and Clint Richards both lost their matches today to finish eighth in the state. But great seasons by both of those gentlemen as well. With a pair of Division I signees on the roster, you knew the Hannibal Pirate swim team had great potential going into this weekend's Missouri State meet. And true to form, the gals set a new landmark in program history today, finishing second in the state, just six points behind Parkway West. Big showing today for Rebecca Land, the Nebraska signee. She defended her state titles in both the 50 free and the 100 back today and combined with Kay Gieske, Jalen Gieske, and Meredith Voss for a state title in the 200 free relay. Also, Jalen Gieske finished second today in the 100 meter butterfly. Our kudos to Rachel Smith's crew for making America's hometown proud in the pools today. That program had no tradition going into the last couple of seasons. Now they're a state power. That's phenomenal stuff. Well, seeking their second trip to Des Moines in three years, the Keokuk Chiefs were tasked tonight with finding a way to take out powerhouse Davenport Assumption that entered the postseason ranked fourth in the state of Iowa. Big, big task tonight for Mike Davis's crew. Could the Keokuk Chiefs get it done up in Washington, Iowa tonight? We're going to start you off with a little Chelsea Stanley in this one as she's going to take the low blocks and make them her own right there, laying it off the rim. However, Assumption had a lot of weapons and a lot of balance. It started with Emma Ambrose doing likewise, scoring from the post. Ashley Longshore, great game. A lot of balance from Keokuk tonight. Longshore with the bucket, the band-aid, and the three-point play right here, but every time Keokuk seemed to make a move, and they had the early lead in this game, Assumption would move right back. This is Jasmine Binion with a nice lay-in at the other end, and back and forth we'd go the entire game in this one. Lauren Reichman draining the three. It was 26-25 at the half, Assumption leading by one. They would pull ahead by as many as 12 in the second half in this game behind uh, Abby Starjack. However, Keokuk just would keep coming back in this game and made a huge flourish. That's Emma Ambrose for uh, Assumption making the great bucket there. But here's our girl, Alexis Lozano Dobbs, who's played so well down the stretch. Great bucket right here. And uh, Miss Lozano Dobbs with a great turnaround bucket. And then Chelsea Stanley, huge comeback. Keokuk had a basket to try to tie it at the end of this ball game, but it fell just shy. Keokuk's fine season comes to an end, though they give Assumption everything they can handle tonight. 66-64 is your exit point for the Keokuk Chiefs in the regional semifinals. Quincy High School at home tonight, a game they weren't supposed to win against Nequa Valley. I hope I haven't tipped my hand too much, but good things happening out at Blue Devil Gym tonight. Started with Mitch Merrill right here. The three-pointer splashing from the top of the key. Early on, though, Blue Devils trailing. It would be a constant fight for them to get into this game tonight, but the Blue Devils have shown they do have fight. D'Angelo Dean off the Austin BB feed. Nice lay in there. Then more from Mr. BB right here. Gets the steal, and he's going to go coast to coast. And look at him hit the brakes right there. Make the guys fly right past him. That's the old top gun move right there. That's uh, pretty effective as well. More D'Angelo Dean right here. The drop step to the baseline. Blue Devils make a huge comeback in the second half. Have a chance to win the ball game. And Mason Fairley tonight will do the Tyler Tomlinson thing. Coming up huge and a big shot, hitting a game winner and giving his team the victory on a two-pointer. Mason Fairley doing the job tonight. The Blue Devils with a pivotal, crucial, phenomenal win that may give them some postseason momentum. 68-66, though Quincy High still has another week to complete in the regular season. How about Pace and Seymour? Speaking of the postseason, a little taste for you. The regional next week is Pace and Liberty teasing everybody. Pace and Leighton by uh, five at the half, and they're looking to extend behind Aaron Edwards right there with a beautiful bucket as he shows off the speed. Eric Berry, though, answers. They're not going to let, Liberty's not going to let Payson get any separation in front of a huge crowd at home right here. More from Payson, though. Bryce Turwell, three-point play, extended himself through the contact. Nice bucket for him. Again, Liberty not going away. In fact, they made a 9-0 run in the third quarter to get back to within one. Started with Jordan Obert, and then in the down low, as always, 
It is the irrepressible Wade Murphy fighting his way through contact, getting the bucket fall. Again, Liberty trims the Payson lead to one. Payson re-extends just a bit here. Again, it's Edwards, quickest point guard in the area, I guarantee. Great bucket for him, and then a great bucket here for Abram Wiseman, getting his way into the paint and creating as well at this point. At that juncture, Payson leading by four. Liberty wouldn't give up tonight. Liberty ends up getting the win behind Dylan Wewell and company by two on the road. That's a nice tune-up for Andy Douglas's team for the regional. 45-43 in a thriller tonight. All the games good tonight, at least on the Illinois side. Palmyra takes care of business and beats Monroe City 61-29. I believe that is the Panthers' fifth straight victory. Matt Thomas's team kind of a gathering storm with districts looming. Also tonight, Mark Twain's boys fell by Highland 74-49. Again, the Smith kids doing it for Highland tonight as they bounce back from that loss last night to Centralia. Clark County's boys been on a nice roll, nearly pulled off the upset of Centralia tonight, just didn't quite have enough to get over the top, losing 57-51. to And the Van Fire boys tonight behind Anthony Connor beat Clopton by the final count in that game of 49 to 37. Well, so far, so good right here. There's plenty more still ahead on overtime, including a ferocious dunk from Illinois College's 5'10", force of nature, and a major upset tonight in America's hometown, plus one.